we've covered the ability to do a powder charge test, which this is the default page when you load Chronoplotter. And now what I'm going to show you is this tab, which is seeding depth. So for the purposes of this, I'm strictly going to use group size based on some shot marker tests that I did. And the nice thing is you can actually use this system uh, outside of kind of what it's designed. And I'll explain in a second. But for the sake of just following what he's doing here, I'm going to use it straightforward. And then I'll explain the differences that you can do. So we have cartridge base to ogive. In this particular case, I actually measure uh, my shoulder to ogive. So I'm going to be putting in that measurement. Again, this doesn't matter. What you enter here is strictly a reference for the graph. I mean, uh, literally, you could put any number in here. In fact, I'll be doing a tuner test using the seating depth tab where I enter my tuner number here and the group size. I'll be doing that tomorrow. And uh, and so you can use it in the same way. So again, just keep in mind, the CBTO is strictly a reference on the graph for you. Now over here, you're going to see that I have my uh, tests, and this is off a shot marker. And one of the nice things about shot marker is that when I click on these, you'll see right here, three shot groups, and then this is my actual group size for those three shots. Now I'll open up one of these just so you can see. And uh, this was done at 300 yards, and uh, some of the groups, you know, one of the things that's nice about shot marker is because it actually measures for you when you start getting into groups like this, where uh, I could zoom in if it was on my pad on the computer, it's a little tougher. But, you know, literally, that's all you're going to see. So having the actual number is nice. Uh, you can see that I label all of my data. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, the, uh, what do we have here, the shortest, so 730. So we're going to go over here and we're going to put in 0.730. Zero, okay, and then we're going to click on the group size or click on it so I can see the group size. So, uh, 0.66 of an inch, okay, and again, three shots is all I need to do a group size test. And then we're going to go down here to add new group, and I can even go in ahead of time. And I know that I'm going to, I can read all here. So, 734, 741, 4446, and 51. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to pre populate this side. Uh, which is what I normally like to do. So 734, and then we're going to add another group, and we're going to be at 737. Now, it's important to put in your decimals. You cannot put in just a whole number that's bigger than two. So if I try putting in, like, I'm hitting 444444, you can see it only allows two digits on the, on the, um, the whole digit side. Uh, so you need to make sure that you put in a decimal place, and it does go to three decimals. Uh, it's possible that he will expand that. Um, I think there's a little merit, but the reality is three digits is all you really need to be accurate. Uh, and if if future tabs are added for different tests, then they would be relative to that that data entry point. So uh, I'm not too worried about that. So 744, 746. And you'll notice these aren't exactly three thousandths apart. So when I load up these three shot groups, I measure all three, I take the average and put it down. So some of them are two, some of them are four. It, you know, it's it's a three thousandths average, but across everything, but it's not exactly going to be that. So seven, five, one. So I had seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we have, yeah, we have seven groups. So now I can go down the line. So 730, my next one here is 0.67. Okay, then on 737, I have 0.79. Okay, 1.1. And one of the things to remember with doing this is that the graph doesn't tell you anything that you can't figure out, honestly, just by looking at the paper. What it does, though, is it really helps put into a visual perspective what's going on. And, you know, even for me, I, sure, I can look at these groups and tell you where I should probably be loading uh, just based on the numbers, you know, because you see a pattern and whatnot. But what it does is it really helps. Um, I, I think what it's what it does more than anything is it really helps somebody look at the numbers and say, OK, I thought maybe I should be here, but graphically, I now see that that might have been a mistake. So here I have my seven groups. Okay, I have my group sizes. I have my seating depth. 
I'm going to hit show group size. Now I, I can show group size delta, which would be the change between each one. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna go ahead and show the graph. Now, you can see that, uh, you know, I've got a nice flat curve here with these three seeding depths. So 730, 734, and 737. Really nice, flat, very low delta changes um, overall. And then you start getting into this and you go, woo, and you get this big loop-de-loop. -loop. Now, here's where, with this particular string, it's pretty easy to look and say, okay, like, I get it. There's a flat spot. This is where we should load our seeding depth. But it's not unlikely that at some point you'd be putting in data and where this, this 0.82 group is, it might have been 0.3 or 0.25. Like, you might have had a quarter-inch group at 300 yards, and you'd be like, oh, man, that's the best group ever. But now when you see this you see that it's really dangerous right because a three thousandths variance in your seating depth plus or minus and suddenly your group size opens up massively okay and and that's really important just like with our powder nodes where maybe you see a a really nice little group uh but it's surrounded by mountains and you don't want that you want this nice flat valley right here and what i did is i loaded up uh, 0.67, uh, well, this group that was 0.67, so the 734 seating depth. So I went to the range, I did my test, uh, I had a bunch of extra ammo that was loaded long. I then said, okay, I'm going to load at 734, and then I shot my 600 yard match. So here is the group uh, from my uh, match that night. Okay. I know what you're thinking. Hey, you know, it's a 198.12, that's not a really great looking group. Uh, but let me let me explain a couple things. First off, if you look up here, uh, you can just barely see because I've got it cropped a bit, but it says uh, NRA MR 65 FC. So I am shooting a 500 yard target at 600 yards. So this is only a five inch circle, which at 600 yards, it should be a six inch circle. So I'm shooting a restricted target because uh, it's more competitive and we have a special division that that we have. So while the score is 198.12, I can tell you that when I convert this to a proper 600 yard target, it was a 215x, which is, you know, really good. I mean, I'm really happy with that. So I have to I have to remember to temper this score because it's a 500 yard target. So it is not a perfect gauge of what's going on. But when I look over here, my vertical 3.8 inches. Uh, so at 600 yards, it's a little over half an MOA. Not great. Uh, I did have a couple flyers down here low uh, that I'm not happy about, and I had this this one up here. Otherwise, it was a pretty tight water line. I have not done a tuner test on it yet, and because of component shortages, uh, you know, even I'm kind of taking a restricted approach. I did not do a full 10, uh, you know, uh, three times 10 on my seating depth. I only did seven, so there might have been something a little lower. It's possible my seating depth should have been just a hair longer, but without knowing what the left side of that graph would have looked like, uh, I went with the middle of that flat curve that we looked at. And that's what's really important is, you know, you got to make do with what you got. Now, I can accept that this load is probably 98, 99% of what I want it to be. Um, once I do the tuner test, hopefully that will help kind of tweak it in without having to expend too many more uh, components, and it should be ready for the big match this weekend. But overall, you know, considering this barrel's got a little over 100 rounds on it, considering this was my first tuning on it, I'm really happy with it. I do feel like the graph helps just solidify your feelings on where you want to go. And hopefully this just gives you a better idea of what is going on uh, when you go from 300 to 600. You can see uh, see what's happening in real time. Now, a little bit windy at the 600 yard line, um, not a lot, you know, just a weird couple weird little pushes that moved me out left and right. There was absolutely nothing that would have caused this vertical, though. Uh, this eight was, you know, totally on me or the load. I am shooting virgin brass. So, you know, maybe we account for a couple of these with virgin brass. Uh, you know, there's any number of variables. It could have been me, could have been the ammo. But bottom line is the ammo looks like it's mostly doing its job right now. It looks like the seating depth did its job and I'm really happy with it. So. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.